can't really describe to you how I feel right now. What I'm experiencing is so detached from the normal, I'm almost convinced I've finally gone insane. Almost, anyway. My wife, B, died at childbirth. She was gorgeous, funny, intelligent, stubborn. A woman whose laugh was so loud, eating in restaurants would be a challenge. And whose stare was so intense it would make my hands shake. I, I lost her in childbirth, uh, to my daughter, Sam. Of course, I could have resented Sam for taking away what was once mine. For taking what truly and was utterly pure, but I didn't. I knew B wouldn't have wanted any resentment. She wouldn't have wanted our only child to be ruined by hate. This isn't about the physical sucker punch of losing forever something you've loved. This is about something more sinister. Leaping up and down the climbing frame, causing havoc in her nursery classes. So for her sixth birthday, a trip with her friends to the movies sounded good, and it left her so pent up with energy I could barely keep up with her. As she dipped and dodged through different people on the pavement, she'd occasionally turn back through the sea of people and shout, Daddy, come on, in a tone that was almost petulant. I couldn't help but love her. I tried to chase her, I, I really did. She was too busy looking at me when she dashed into the road and the bus came and didn't have time to stop. It was a sickening crunch and the world fell silent. I, I cradled her broken arms too, too numb to weep, too hurt to move. All I could feel was the warm blood gently seep into my clothes and in the state of shock I was in all I could think about was how I was going to get the blood out of my jeans. It sounds horrid, I know, but when something that tragic happens to you, you just think of the basic thought processes that makes you a human. The next week was a blur. I can't place a single memory to a time. In between, friends and family were extending their condolences, the howling sobs of mine that would break out at any moment, a door slamming, gentle hum, fridges, or a voice laughing on the radio. It's just a mix of those things, really. I attended her funeral, of course, and I was dressed in black. My very essence was just kind of dark. It wasn't just my clothes. I couldn't feel, I couldn't think. The day continued, and I just went through the motions, like a dying man treading water. Everyone wanted to tell me about Sam, how perfect she was, that she was an angel, as if I didn't know that. One man, though, he stood out from the rest. He walked up to me and handed me this large leather book. I assumed at the time that it was a parent of one of Sam's friends handing me a collection of their photos together, or maybe I was too numb to even process his cold hands. How he never mentioned my daughter once was pretty weird. For a month, I was lost. I drank and stayed in our now empty apartment, alone, watching old box sets, too numb to even cry. It was when my sister arrived, when she held my hand and talked to me, and I began to come out of my shell. She'd sit down and listen to the most insane things I said, and gently coaxed me out of my depression. Not completely, but enough for me to get my life back on track. That was when I opened the book. I decided to remember Sam for all the joy she gave me, and was prepared to reflect on her life without feeling miserable. I opened to the first page, and it was essentially a binder, full of Polaroid photos of my daughter growing up. I furrowed my brow. These were taken from a distance. I blurred slightly, and I was in a few of them. Ugh. I began to feel sick, but I hoped the following photos would provide some sort of explanation. I came up with every excuse of how the man obtained these photos, desperate to view the moments of my daughter's life without any sense of trepidation. The photos grew closer and closer to my daughter's birthday. I could see the day I gave her a tiny bike after she turned five, and the skin knees ensued. The book had so many more pages, that I assumed the rest were empty. But there was a photo of her just before the movies on her sixth birthday. I could recognize the pink raincoat that she was wearing. But there was no photo of the crash, but instead her life just continued in the book. Like actually just continued. Her seventh birthday had a photo of her in a garden covered in paint, with a huge canvas on the floor and an extremely messy painting. Her seventh birthday. Her seventh birthday! 
The reality of what I was seeing hit me when I slammed the book shut. I sat there in the kitchen staring at the leather. This must be some sort of sadistic photoshop. I hoped. I hoped someone would just take the time to pull a horrid prank on me. It'd be the only explanation. The only one I'd be willing to accept. Gritting my teeth, I decided I had nothing to lose and kept reading. I can't explain the emotions I felt while well, I read accurately. Listening to the sound of the page turning, I can try, but nothing could prepare you for something like this. Her life continued, showing losing her baby teeth, her first day of middle school. My turning of the pages became more and more frenzied as I began to notice something. The photographer was getting closer and closer, closer to her. As she grew older, not in every photo, but it was a general trend, the photographer was getting closer and closer. More daring, perhaps? She was beautiful, stunning. As a teenager, she looked like her mother, all the curls and smiles. I grew older too, but the photos began to include me less and less. Her 16th birthday was strange. A group of her friends were sitting outside drinking from plastic cups at a picnic. But there was someone in the background, near the bushes. A dark figure, I think? Yeah, it's a dark figure. You wouldn't have noticed him, if not the small shadow cast on the grass, he was barely there. I leaned back for a moment and exhaled. This was too weird. I'd been caught up watching my little girl grow up and I hadn't noticed how this would end. Moments like this are just so utterly surreal that sometimes you remove yourself from them. I almost felt like I was watching myself read these, like I was in a dream or a program on television. I continued. The dark figure became more and more present with each photograph. I could almost make out features. His presence was towering, and as I turned the page I expected to see him disappear, but instead, as the photographs grew closer to her 18th birthday, she was no longer somewhere I recognized. Instead the photos were in a dimly lit house. Her face was contorted by fear, striking all sorts of weird poses. Sometimes she'd be dressed like an ancient queen, or she'd be dressed like a maid scrubbing the floors. The figure was even closer now. Her legs or his arm would appear in each and every one, no matter how she was dressed. In every photo, her face had this desperately pained expression. It killed me. There were bruises on her face. She looked thin, ill even. I couldn't do it. This was sick. Properly sick. My girl. I soldiered on. The last photo I looked at, before I slammed the book shut and swore to never look at it again, was of her 18th, captured underneath at last in sloppy writing. She was looking straight at the camera, crying with her hands on her knees, dressed in a black evening dress with an apple in her mouth and her hands behind her back. Her makeup was ruined by tears. It was as if she was pleading, begging for help, but it couldn't. I closed the book and, and left the room, my whole body convulsing with sobs. The thing that keeps me up at night isn't the content that I saw. It's that there were so many more pages left. <laughs>